see. So we're here for a good time, maybe a long time. Who knows? Hmm. See how it goes. Okay. So welcome to the Euro Legions podcast. All new for 2023. John Caulfield here, Luxembourg's biggest Mythic Legions fan, soon to be Cosmic Legions fan. And thankfully, I won't be doing this alone because nobody wants to listen to that. Joining me all the way from Bristol in England, Wales's finest export since Catherine Jenkins, it's Richard Jones! Hello there. Hey, Rich. I can't sing as well as I'm afraid. Oh, well, that's okay. As long as you look as good as her, I think we'll take that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And from Birmingham, which is also in England, smoother than a Cadbury's dairy milk, which is made in Birmingham, it's Malcolm Kennedy! Hello. Looking forward to this. It's going to be good. Yeah, for sure. So, gents, why don't you tell me, what are we doing here? After you, Rich. We do, we're doing a podcast. Um, yeah. We were so impressed by everybody else's that we thought, do you know what? We need to get in on this. The, the Europeans are not being represented enough. Uh, other than various guest appearances, so let's let's do one of our own. We love the topic. We love mythic legions, cosmic legions, toys in general. So let's just do a podcast. Exactly, and we're on similar time zones, which means that I'm not trying to put matchsticks in my eyes doing a yes. live stream or a <laughs> podcast or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The American ones are a bit late for us, aren't they? So this this is a bit easier for sure. And we all met. Last November for the first time. I mean, I know, Richard, that I had definitely chatted to you online before then. And Malcolm, I think you had been very quiet in the groups up until then, because uh, literally the first time I met you was in the in the elevator in the hotel for Legion's Con. Yes, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not the most uh, social media savvy person, really. I mean, I'm, I'm on there and I follow things I like, but I'm not a big commenter. So you're going to be in charge of marketing this podcast? That's then, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'd we'd uh, end very quickly if it, if it was on me. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so we, yeah. we basically... I was just going to say, yeah, so I met you boys in the, um, in the Legion's Con Hotel. So I got a message from, from you, John, saying there's a projector showing the G-Con reveals. Come and, come and have a look. So exactly. I, uh, I schlepped over from my cheaper hotel that I was staying in, um, got there, uh, met John face-to-face for the first time. I bought a couple of things off him in the past, but bought met him first, uh, and then met Malcolm. Um, and the three of us seemed to bond pretty well, I'd say, gents. Yeah, definitely. I think Most buddies the for the weekend, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Spent a lot of time together, drank a lot of alcohol together. Ate, ate yeah. a lot of Jersey Mike's together. <laughs> together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw some were recently where people, there was some other American podcast I was listening to, and they were talking about how much they love Jersey Mike's. And I was like, I know that. <laughs> it, was good. it was good. I've not touched a subway since because, to be honest, it was so much better. Than, uh, yeah, for sure. Anyway. For sure. Do we need to add in here that other, other takeaway sandwich shops are available? <laughs> Or is that no, just I don't, no we're, 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 not, we're not sponsored by anyone, okay. so, so I think we're, 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 we're covered. <laughs> exactly. So, for the love of legions, that's what, that's what brought us together then. And, it um, did, and, and what, a, what a love it is, John. Yeah, exactly. But, you mean, know, it gets us to travel halfway around the world to, to mingle with fellow legion lovers. Yeah, so I mean... It's, it's a strong I, pull. The weird thing is that basically, you know, of course, COVID happened and all that, you know, so you're sitting, sitting around and you're thinking, you know, I'm going to grasp something the next time I can do it, you know, and I was sitting there at home watching the, the whatever, the 2020 Legions Con online, like everybody, because I, I think uh, that one was online. And then the next one, it was just too difficult to travel to the States. I know maybe one or two people did, but uh, after that, I said, okay, the next time that there is a chance to go because it is literally uh, the thing I collect now. I mean, I collected a lot of, of things over the last seven, eight years, but Legions was the kind of thing that really kept me interested in everything. Uh, so I just booked a plane as soon as I saw it and uh, booked my ticket and said, okay, I'm just going to go and meet people and see what happens. And uh, 
yeah, it was just so funny that the first guy I meet there is a, a guy that's also done the, basically the same thing, I think, Malcolm, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I sort of mentioned previously, it's around my birthday. And I very, very nearly went to 2021 because we'd all come out of lockdown. Mm. Uh, America had opened up to UK travellers and it was just like, oh, do I do it? Do I do it? But it, as you say, it was just it was just too close. And I think the States were still having a lot of problems with COVID. So it, it, it put me off. But then, yes, uh, like you, next time it came around, I was just like, and it's a full weekend, not just a day. Um, yeah, exactly. Day. Yeah, that was, a, had to that was it. definitely had a... To yeah, because I think back then, was that even before there was vaccinations or maybe it was just around the time there was vaccinations? So it was just very difficult to travel. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you add that in, plus the kind of actual, it is difficult to travel in regular circumstances, you know, for a weekend to the States. I know that when I when I came back, I think I, think I spent the whole weekend kind of, you know, slightly dizzy. And it wasn't just because of the alcohol. I think it was, you know, you had the time difference, the travel, the lack of sleep. Uh, I'm quite a. The I'll oven. Say, was I, the, I, I, uh, the um, show showroom was just too hot as well. That was exactly. Yeah. And uh, what was the guy Ryan Anthony? He he managed to actually figure out that uh, that there was an aircon. So imagine if he hadn't found that, we'd have we'd have. I think we mightn't be oh. here now. I almost melted as it was. So thank you, Ryan, for that. Exactly. <laughs> Just, I was wearing shorts and a, a you know a linen shirt because it was so hot anyway, and the sweat was still pouring off me. It was so hot in there. So yeah. exactly, and uh, yeah, that was the funny thing—the weather as well. I mean, when I booked it, I was just you know I booked it, I suppose, in maybe April, May time, uh, maybe even June. So it was lovely weather here, uh, and I did kind of think, oh, you know. I'm I'm looking out the window and it's all sunny and everything like this, but I'm going to be kind of alone in New York and it's going to be snowing and I'm going to be trying to drag a suitcase and I'm going to be, and it wasn't like that at all. It was like it was like end of August. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was, at the it was start crazy. I, like you, I presumed it'd be snow, snow, bitterly cold, and then about a week before, my wife was just like, um, she's like, "Have you seen the temperatures over there at the moment?" And I was like, "No." Went online and was like, okay, shorts. There we go then. <laughs> it's hotter than it is in the UK. Brilliant. I was jealous exactly. of you in shorts. I wish I'd taken that. <laughs> I think next year, just in case. Mm. I, I, yeah. I joke, but I literally would have died if I'd had trousers on. Yeah. It, no, I, I mean, uh, I, I I guarantee next year is going to be snowstorm, you know, just to just to oh, wrap yeah. it up. But yeah, the, see, the key thing is, uh, that's actually one of the key things, because, I mean, obviously when the weather's nice, it's much less likely that us poor crossing the Atlantic folks are going to get affected by travel, you know, because as 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 easy as it all is to get around these days, you know, still if snow and all that kind of stuff, it delays stuff, you know, and when you're just going for three, four days, you know, a half a day delay, that's, that's a quarter of your holiday, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, poor Dennis Darby. Oh, um, yeah got horribly delayed didn't it It was like the second day i think pretty much when he turned up exactly um yeah so yeah you know a delay for a two-day event is a big big thing exactly and and our plan is to rendezvous again in new jersey in november 2023 oh oh hell yes i think it's a technical term yeah yeah I think if me and Mal can organise it, we'll probably fly yeah, over together as well. Yeah, Mal? get the same flight over there if we can. If we can wrangle that, yeah, I'll probably stay yeah, fl- for, for days longer afterwards, as I say. But uh, definitely fly over there. Yeah, I, I booked a flight to Newark this time because uh, it's a bit further into New Jersey than it was before uh, this year. So uh, I'm not as brave to travel that much across New York, New Jersey. So, no, last time it was. It was what twenty minutes yeah. cab ride from Newark towards yeah. New York, and this time it's from Newark, and this time it's half an hour in the other way. So that's a you know good old journey yeah. If you're trying to get and I came York. from JFK this time, and I came on the subway and all that, which was grand. But you're talking it was talking another hour, and I was googling it was another hour, two hours just to get out to the thing on public transport. Oh yeah, and then forget it. about it with a taxi. You know, you're spending all your your exclusives money if you get in a taxi. You know. I was gonna say. Oh, don't talk, don't talk to me about taxis. 
That was my <laughs> first exp- first experience of that America trip was getting into a massive argument with a RC cab driver. So yeah, oh. who kicked off because I wouldn't give him a tip, having charged me seventy four dollars for a twenty minute oh, yeah. uh, taxi ride. So yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I'm guessing tips. we're all let's, let's not start on tips. I'm guessing we're all taking bigger bigger cases this year as well to make sure we've got enough room for everything. <laughs> Possibly. I mean, I bought a little uh, sports bag on the way back, I have to say, to my shame. <laughs> Thankfully, I had the luggage yeah. allowance for it. <laughs> and I took a completely empty large suitcase with me last time and filled it to the brim with figures and uh, exclusives and everything else. So I'll probably do the same again this year. Maybe not quite as many figures. Yeah, so I guess there might be some people at this point, if they have managed to, to, to listen to this first episode, they might be wondering, actually, what are we talking about here? Now, I, I really don't think so, because I think that, you know, this is really a targeted audience thing. But, I mean, uh, I started kind of collecting again, dabbled a bit in Transformers, He-Man, all that kind of stuff. But this name that just kept coming up all the time was Four Horsemen. And I guess it was because of the the He-Man uh, link with their Masters of the Universe classic song, which I knew nothing about in the kind of mid-2010s, uh, um, when I kind of really started to get back into eclectic. Um, but yeah, this is kind of why we're here. Four Horsemen Studios, they make a two amazing lines really now called uh, Mythic Legions, Cosmic Legions. Cosmic Legions, which is really yet to arrive. It's This is the big year for Cosmic Legions, I think, when they arrive. And a little small line they have as well called Figura Obscura, which is really cool. Uh, a lot of uh, fun characters in there. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what what this podcast is going to kind of be focused around in general. Uh, because I think it's the kind of main thing that we all collect. But I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to just leave it there because, you know, there's so much to talk about in this world and, and the odd time it might be quiet on the four horsemen front doesn't look like it at the moment. And, uh, I think fair play to them because they've got a good, uh, fan base and they should certainly, uh, run their business accordingly. But, uh. What sort of other stuff do you boys uh, collect these days? After you, Rich. Rich. Um, I collect too much other stuff at the moment, it's fair to say. Um, yeah. To the, point, to the point of I was uh, on the bus journey home today when I wasn't having to tell off a person who was abusing somebody on the bus. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was in my head, I was deciding, right, what needs to go? Um, Cosmic looks so good. I've got so many mythics that I, I need to cut down a bit here. So... Uh, the McFarlane Warhammer stuff will be going, um, which is a shame. I loved that in my youth, mm. but I just can't keep that. Um, I also collect Marvel Legends, um, but I'm going to restrict myself to Spider-Man stuff, Fantastic Four stuff, and Deadpool stuff. And so only 100 personally. figures a year. <laughs> only, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah Spider-Man. You so uh, the, I'm, the I'm quite range. limited. I'm not, a com- I'm not a completist. So Spider-Man in 24 different costumes doesn't bother yeah, me yeah. in the slightest. Gotcha. gotcha. Just whatever um, picks your fancy. Yeah, I also collect Super, uh, Super 7 Thundercats and TMNT, although the yeah. TMNT might not be lasting much longer, um, judging by current news. Uh, oh, what was the most classified. recent? What was the most recent? Just a tangent off that. What was the most recent on the Thundercats? The Thundercats. The Thundercats line was quite good. Um, no, but what was the? Was... Why? Why are they not continuing? Or what's the? What's the rumor oh, there? Oh, that was T- that was TMNT. Oh, so TMNT, basically, they, yes. They, oh yeah, yeah the Playmates thing. Based on the on the Playmates thing, and then mm. on the original Playmate toys, and been doing a fabulous job. Um, yeah. Even though they moved away from the Four Horsemen sculpting. Still doing a great yes. job, and then Playmates decided, no, you're not doing that anymore. Um, so they've had to move to different designs, and the, the first few look shite. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, to put it tactfully, so somebody posted a photo of that Rat King uh, in one of the groups. Oh, you know. it, yeah, um, maybe the maybe our our favorite podcast, my wife is going to kill me, kill me, their group, um, and uh, well, John, I, John I, I, correct I, you now. It's our second favorite podcast now. <laughs> well. This one. Yeah, 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 but our, our favorite one that we're not in. Um, and then Eric from the Four Horsemen, Eric Mays, he, he actually 
he actually replied to I, I bit a comment saying, oh, it's gone downhill since the four horsemen have stopped. And he said, uh, we still sculpted one or two figures in this wave, but not that one. <laughs> so, um, or a couple of figures, he said. So they didn't do the Rat King. And I guess the two that looked the best were the Casey, which is a repaint, and the Leo, uh, which... Yeah, the rock uh, one. Yeah, yeah, which seems to be fairly faithful to the original. So, yeah, very good. Anyway, so... The other thing, I was going to say, the other two things I collect are my two favourite lines from when I was a kid, which is G.I. Joe and Transformers. Ooh. So I've got some Masterpiece Transformers, um, although that's slain down generally now, mm-hmm. uh, and G.I. Joe Classified. I love the G.I. Joe Classified line. Yeah, I have an eight-year-old uh, boy, and he... Well, he's almost eight, and uh, Transformers, he loves. The, they still hold up as toys. I had a mm. couple of the the most recent Hasbro ones from the Netflix series. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah Earthrise or, or one of those. And, yeah, he, he loves them. But, uh, yeah, I think they're still good toy toys, not just collectibles, you know. And Absolutely. you, Malcolm? Yeah, I mean, I at this point, I am pretty much narrowed down to the mythics so there's the odd one or two other bits and pieces I pick up. Well I kind of got back into collecting comics and toys thanks to um, The Dark Knight when that came out Um, Oh really? Yeah that kind of Mm. triggered me back into it all and then I decided to pick up like some DC stuff mostly Batman. I always loved the Joker and Harlequin so it was all figures around them Um, Gotcha then, yeah, more recently, I was sort of, when McFarlane were doing stuff, they just started churning it out so fast. <laughs> and the mm. quality, I personally think, in sculpts and in whether the arms are going to break off or not, you yeah. up and down from figure to figure, I kind of had already cut back on that. And my interests perhaps have moved on a bit since mythics since you know seeing what mythics are doing and what but is that the there. thing is that 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 i think that's the reason why we're here is that every time you get a box from the four horsemen they're good you yeah. know yeah. there it's might like, be a few things where you go oh you know maybe there's a slightly loose hand or i don't know, not hand but you know there's a yeah. slightly thing that you're not happy with but it's so minimal usually and that's not to sound like too much of a fanboy no, no, I, it, that I, it's always exciting uh, i did get a couple of those todd father batman figures because i love batman and uh yeah one of them was great and the other one was awful so it was, it was just it was just too much of a roller coaster for me you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like two figures yeah. and it was like one was great one was awful it's like yep. what am i supposed to think here well, none you know, of, I, was, I was really looking forward to seeing what he did with... They cannot do real-looking human faces. None of their movie mm. lines look any good, if you ask me. The figures look great. The head sculpts yeah. look awful. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> besides that, I get I was getting G.I. Joe classified, but I think as we'll touch on yeah. at a later date about how hard that's become over here. Um, mm. <laughs> oh, yes. A yeah, th- this game. won't... This this won't turn into an international shipping is awful uh, uh, podcast, but but there might be the odd uh, touch of realism on that front, you know. Yeah. But we'll try and uh, well, we won't we try and not scare too many people away with the uh, with the sob stories. Yeah, it's, it's talking about our I mean, Pete McCarthy from My Wife Is Gonna Kill Me is not going to listen anyway, so <laughs> and he's the one that's most annoyed by that. <laughs> um, I mean, he, 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 we we could only talk about our experiences as as oh for sure for US sure collectors can't we and if supply for sure. routes aren't very good we have to talk about it <laughs> you know? oh for sure yeah I mean <clears throat> um, the the other side of that of course is that you know is is the market there that's what I always wonder you know because I often see in the groups you know uh, the buy and selling of figures you know in the US groups I mean obviously there's more people yes. but. Uh, it seems to be healthier. I, I got, yeah, my, my theory on this is that America just has more toy shops. You know, Ooh. there are sto- so many stores that are just genuine toy stores that sell action figures, left, right, and yeah. center, um, which you just don't get in this country. You've got Forbidden Planet that carries a handful, yeah, and then some online stuff, and, th- and that's it. So if people aren't seeing them in their local shops, then there's not going to be the demand. Gotcha. Um, 
you know, the Mythics in the UK has been a, a blessing and a curse. You know, if you buy something, it's generally a bit cheaper. If you want to sell it, mm-hmm. you're not getting what you would do in America. Yeah. The, the market just isn't here. And that's because people aren't just seeing it on a, sh- on a shop shelf. I don't yeah. Know. I think that's that's the way you, you get it to grow in the UK, though, isn't it? Is uh, it, it needs to be more visible to people. Um, I think it is. It seems like it's a lot more visible in the US because of oh, well, available as well in the US, obviously, than it is over here. So I think that puts yeah. people off. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I think it's what connects people to it, you know. Obviously, you know, Marvel Legends, the DC multiverse, there's a very obvious connection there. I mean, you know, whether it's you like Batman in the movies, whether you like Marvel movies, or whether you've grown up reading those comics, you know, or a combination of the two. Whereas this is just, you know, are you into action figures? Are you into really cool toys? You know, that's, it, it's a little bit that, you know. And I wonder if that's more of a thing over there than it is here, you know? More people. <laughs> it's, uh, you get... think it's just more people? There's a lot of people in the UK, you know? Mm, potentially. I don't know. It's, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I think I think it's just a lack of product. Um, you think? If you go to like a... I think so. If you go to a Comic Con in this country, even the really yeah. big ones like Birmingham and London, yeah, there are you know there are some action figures, but there's just like Funko Pop shit, <laughs> Funko Pops yeah, around everywhere. all over the place. Yeah. yeah, whereas America, you know, you see online people doing like you know online tours and that sort of stuff, and it's just wall to wall action figures in these things. Mm. So there's just there's just more product out there for people to, to see and just you know fall in love with. Yeah, I would uh, if I had American friends coming, you know, American toy collecting friends coming to see. I would take them to a couple of the large. Um, supermarkets slash department stores slash toy stores in the area and just show them the rubbish that's there. Uh, yeah. I mean, you won't find Mythic Legions, obviously, there. That's that's fine. But if, you know, if you're talking about uh, Marvel or DC figures, you, you won't find them either. You find the big ones that uh, are supposed to be for the kids, you know, these cheap old 12-inch ones and, and all that. But, yeah, there's, there's nothing really worth collecting in any of those shops, you know, over here at least. No. Yeah. Like I went to Walmart uh, the Monday after Legion's Con when I had a couple of hours to kill before the airport. And uh, while there wasn't anything amazing there, there was just, it, and that was just a Walmart near wherever uh, the con was in Secaucus, New Jersey. And uh, yeah, there was, there was lots of cool stuff that I could have picked up and brought home and sold on eBay for 10 or over what it costs. You know, and that's not to say that that's the point of it, but it's just I couldn't go to, and I live in a near a couple of big uh, cities in Germany. I couldn't go to any of those cities and pick up something that I could sell. Uh, I pick up something at a price that I could sell at a cost on eBay that to make any money. It's just it's not there, um, and and that's okay. But it's like it it is a big difference when you're deep in this community, and I think that's what uh, makes Mythic Legions more interesting because. They are harder to get, but once you're in the system and once you're on the the, the train tracks and rolling around on it, it's a runaway train. <laughs> you, you, yeah, yeah, but th- then you're in. Then it's fine, you know. Then it's like you're rolling, you know, and you you're, you, you things are coming in every couple of months, and you're just, you're on the pre-orders, and you yeah, feel like you're getting you're pre- the- you go rich, yeah. I was going to say, you know, you're alert to the pre-orders. You're like, yeah. you know, you're bound to join something like the Cabal and then you'll see the pre-orders mm. and it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, as you say, John, you're on the train. It's like, I know this is coming now. I can get regular stuff. This is amazing. Yeah, but but you also, you have different expectations. You're not going to see it. Even if you have a good local comic book store, I'm sure there's plenty of them in the UK, even if they're not uh, in your area, but you're not going to see them and if you are it's going to be someone like us running the comic store who's into the line and has bought a couple of extras and they're not going to be at a kind of regular price and that's absolutely fine but that's a different thing but with this line you it's it's like a commitment thing you have to commit you know it's it's like a wife it's not a girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think we've coined it now. Mythic Legion. I was trying to decide which not one was the cheapest. Not a I girlfriend. Can't, I can't it's a make wife. Any <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one one is a bigger commitment. Would you say, whether it's financial Absolutely. or yes. emotional, it doesn't really matter. One is a bigger commitment. Yeah, for sure. I can confirm my current girlfriend is less hassle than my wife. That's a joke, by the way, if my wife ever listens to this, that is a hundred percent a joke. <laughs> Are we sure? What's our email address? I'll send her the link. Episode one. So come Legions Con 23, we'll be discussing Rich's divorce then and how horrible that's been. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you, you, you jest. I was um, working out my annual leave. Uh, I got left over today in work. Uh, and I don't have enough for the, the stuff we want to do this year. Oh, uh, no. My wife who works in, the same pl- works in the same place comes over. And she's like, well, you can, you know. Legion Con can go, and I'm like, no, it can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's, that's booked in. That's booked in. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So everything else can be altered. <laughs> exactly. But you're off to America in a few weeks, no? Yes. Scout- uh, off to the. Um, I was about to say sunny California, and then I caught myself because it's horrific weather conditions over there at the moment, by all accounts. But yes, California for a couple of weeks, so that'll be nice. Yeah, just just pop, pop, head it, head it. Snowed. Yeah, head in the sand about the weather. You're going to open the door of the plane, yeah. and you're going to walk out, and it's going to be shades. And yeah, yeah, this is this but, is what we're hoping. It'll, it'll bring, be great fun weather. Bring one pair of pants in your suitcase, just in case. Yeah. Just in case, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And I've already found uh, what appears to be a very cool toy shop uh, in San Jose. Thank you for whoever it was on uh, the support group that told me about that one. Um, very good. And we're also in Anaheim, where there's the biggest toy and collectibles fair in the world, I think. Frank and Sons. Like 200 Excellent. Vendors. So we get to do that as well. So there'll be a bit of toy shopping as well as the nice holiday. I love it. I love it. And a lot of pictures in our little uh, Facebook group making us... Extremely oh, yes. jealous, and uh, I think it's fair to say there will be some of that. Yes, yeah. I started a WhatsApp group in work a few years ago just so I could post pictures of my sunny holiday. Oh, beautiful! Um, which went, obviously went, which obviously went down really well with my colleagues. <laughs> they, you know, <laughs> yeah. F- funny side note on that: I have a very, a very funny uh, Scottish friend in uh, Luxembourg. There's a lot of expats here in Luxembourg, uh, one of the smallest countries in Europe. For anyone listening in from the states. But uh, Scottish guy, and he was he went on his holidays to Curacao, which is an island uh, kind of near the Caribbean or somewhere like that. And he put in his out of office. He goes, I'll be out of the office till blah blah blah, whatever dates. Um, and don't worry about me. Even the rain is warm in Curacao. <laughs> <laughs> I could just and he, de- he used to deal with clients, so you know you can imagine the client. He's all upset about his uh, whatever's going wrong, and he gets this out of the office back. Beautiful. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Very good, guys. So, um, have we anything else for episode one that we want to squeeze in there? No, no. I think I think people have listened this long. They clearly enjoy the sound of our voices, our exactly. dulcet tones, as it were. So, so and I then think the our... next episode. Which won't be too far behind. Will be no. all sorts of exciting toy news and yeah, I think uh, and everything else. We wanted to make this first episode a little bit more of a casual chat. I think people get to know us a little bit, um, and we'll try and. I think we'll our goal going forward is to oh going forward that's corporate speak. I don't even work in the corporate world anymore. That's <laughs> awful. I'm gonna bold, John. No, never say that again. Uh, I'm gonna bleep that out. In the edit. <laughs> um, in the future, we we will try and structure it a little bit around. Uh, I think we're as I I think as we said we're going to focus this on legions. But uh, if you have uh, a, a minimal interest in legions, there'll still be plenty for you to listen to. And uh, if you even just like our accents, that's also okay. You know, absolutely. Good we for are that. A, yeah. ASMR, church or whatever it is, the phrase ASMR, is, so yes. Ir- Irish, English, slightly continental. There we go. Very good. Well, uh, thanks everybody who listened. Probably not much at the moment, but it's a work in progress. We'll get there. 
And, Absolutely. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. And uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.